Hi guys, I am back and today I am going to be doing the fourth update to my book roulette series. If you don't know, this year I am doing a 50 book challenge that I found on Pinterest. My spreadsheet, the prompts, the original Pinterest challenge, all of that will be linked down below along with all of my previous uploads for your viewing pleasure. So feel free to get all caught up at the playlist below. If you are already caught up, you may know that I had four prompts rolled in at the last update, which was two months ago. And those prompts were a book with more than 500 pages, a book that takes place in your hometown, a book you own but have never read, a book more than 100 years old, and a book written by an author with your same initials. So, um, this, my previous update I filmed early because of moving and graduation and all of those crazy things, so I actually had like two-ish extra weeks than I normally would for this previous like span of time between now and the last update, but I only read six books. However, I did a really good job of reading the books that are actually in my prompts. So to start off for a book um, that you own but have never read, I read If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowlin. This was a Christmas gift and I really liked it. It was really good, very sad. Also, I'm sorry, I don't have any physical books with me because I've been giving them away and things like that. And most of them I read on my Kindle. So no physical books to share today, but I do, I'll do. i show a picture of what they look like on the screen. Um, this book is um, a teen drama, I would say. The main character is really interesting. She wants to be a writer. She has a lot of really cool goals. Um, and it centers around her and her childhood best friend and her family and it's pretty sad. If you don't like crying at books this is not the book for you but if you don't mind teen like if it if you're an adult who doesn't mind reading from a teenager's perspective or if you are a teen then you might really like this book. She's very socially aware of how different cliques and different people at her school interact and how those interactions are perceived which was really interesting because I feel like sometimes adult authors write teenagers as these rationless beings um, which is not the case obviously we've all been a teenager and so seeing someone who has a really good like way of thinking things through and understanding nuance was really interesting and then bringing it back to high school and relationships and cliques and it was kind of interesting and then um, you've got the underlying uh, base relationship between her and her childhood estranged best friend that's kind of the focus of the book so very good and then the next book that I finished was a book that takes place in your hometown. I read The Apple Orchard by Suzanne Wiggs. I'm originally from Sonoma County. This is based in Sonoma County. That's as specific as I could find or that I wanted to find, I guess. And I surprisingly really loved this book. It was very cool. It flashed back to World War II Poland and the like grandfather and him growing up, um, I'm sorry, not Poland, Denmark, I'm so sorry, Denmark, because I, I didn't know this, but the Danish resistance um, was considered one of the most inspiring unorganized resistances um, in the World War, in any, in World War II. Um, they, the, just as civilians, they worked really hard to stand up to the invasion of Denmark by, um, the Nazi, like the Nazi forces. And so it was really cool reading about that. Um, and then there are some other characters that come into play later, but it mainly focuses around these two half sisters who find each other because their grandfather, their paternal grandfather goes into a coma and the someone at the hospital suggests hey you should probably get his affairs in order and they find each other through looking at his will so they unearth their shared history neither of them are very uh neither of them knew their father he died when they were a baby and so they get to understand how they never knew about each other but they're half sisters and they 
find a lot of family history. I need to talk less about these books, but it's okay. These, there's like three that I hadn't heard of before, and then there's going to be like a couple that are going to be quicker for obvious reasons. Then the next prompt that I finished was um, a book written by an author with your same initials. So I read The Seagate by Jane Johnson. And this was another really surprisingly interesting book. It was very suspenseful, honestly. I was not prepared. I was reading it before bed and then things would happen. I'm like, I can't put this down. I'm all jumpy now. But I thought it was a really great book. Um, it is about a woman who due to her mother's passing, she finds out about this kind of distant cousin who's in need of some help because she's fallen and broken her leg. She's quite elderly. And so she goes out to help her and it flashes back and forth between the elderly cousin and the who I consider to be the main character, who the story starts being about, um, and how their stories tie together, how they both kind of found themselves um, it's also flashes back to World War II. There's a lot of, a lot of books like that. Um, and this is in the south of England, I believe. It's in Cornwall. So that's where the house is. So you kind of get to see how these different people um, react to this house and how they make decisions. And you find out some very interesting things about both of the characters and then it's, it's a pretty satisfying ending so that was a really good book and then the last book that I read that was a prompt was a book that's more than a hundred years old and I read I technically listened to this one as an audiobook Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen um I had never read it I was supposed to read it in high school like literally it was on our reading list and then our teacher ran out of time and then just made us watch the movie instead. And I considered using this book for the prompt, like a book I should have read in high school, but there's lots of books that I didn't read in high, that my high school curriculum didn't cover that I can fill in for that prompt. So I wanted to use it for this one, just for the sake of adhering to the prompts. Classic story, really good. Um, I think that the adaptation, the audiobook adaptation that I listened to was good, she, honestly, from her voices, you could usually tell who was talking, which I thought was very impressive considering it was a one woman show. It was very good. Um, and you can see reading Bridgerton and then read and then listening to this was very interesting because you can see where Bridgerton drew inspiration, but then obviously it's a much more modern story and, um, the author takes some liberties with it so you can see kind of the differences and I yeah excellent book if you want to read a classic and the odyssey and oh my god heart of darkness I think is what it's called the one where they're on the river and um what were other books that I hated in high school oh my god uh that Shakespeare one King Lear no Anyways, those ones, not a fan. Pride and Prejudice, very much a fan, so would recommend. So then I read two, three books that I, that didn't fill the rolled in prompts, but filled different prompts. So I read Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is my new favorite Emily Henry book. It is so good. The characters just work so well together. It's such a beautiful story. I bawled. Bald. I was like, if my roommate comes in right now, they're just going to see me blub. up. They're going to think someone died. But no, it was just a book. <laughs> um, and I thought it was so good. I read it basically in a weekend. Every Emily Henry book I basically picked up. And then once I hit like 50, 60 pages, I can't put it down and I finish it within a couple of days. But I think of the Emily Henry books, this is my favorite so far. I also, as a tall girl... I felt so seen when she, there's a point in the book where she goes on a date and the guy is automatically like, why are you so tall? Why, like, why, why can't you be shorter? Can you just like cut your feet off? And he doesn't say that verbatim, but yep, that is, that's what it's like out there sometimes if you are over five foot nine. So it's a fun time. So that little bit being in there, I feel like Emily Henry either herself is really tall. Her other main characters in Betrayed and uh, 
and people we meet on vacation I feel like are kind of petite. I think in people we meet on vacation he makes fun of her for being petite but in this one she's tall, she's beautiful. I mean the, what romance character isn't beautiful? What person in a book isn't beautiful? And yeah I just I really loved. Oh such a good one. But read at your own. Um, warning you will cry be in a safe place then um a book that was recommended to me by my mom or it's like a book your mom loves i chose lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmis my mom has been insisting that i read this book for a really long time and i had seen it around it's i think it's shelved with women's contemporary literature and sometimes you know those books tend to take me a little bit longer to read than a quick easy romance novel but this book was so so well done it's about a chemist in the 1950s who falls in love and then has a child and she just does not put up with people's shit for lack of a better word she views things very logically and frankly at the in the 1950s not everything was logical I'm not saying it was like the world's worst time but it really addresses sexism um puritanical culture of like marriage and um having like having to be seen a certain way having to get married what they expect women to aspire to be as far as homemakers and she most men hate her <laughs> but she starts doing something where she can reach a lot of women through her work and women just really resonate with her and um in the book it kind of is very uplifting seeing how even at that time this character was able to reach so many people and then the last book that i read is another bridgerton book it's the second book in the series the viscount who loved me by Julia Quinn and I f filled this with the prompt a book with a love triangle I have talked to someone who's seen the show I want to read the books before I watch the show um but I know that in the show it's more of a love triangle um than it is in the book but I still counted it in the book um not to spoil it's two sisters and Anthony starts to pursue one of them and then ends up having to marry one of them the, the other I guess sorry if that spoiled anything and so it the the first sister takes it very well but it's still kind of a love triangle because of the way that feelings and expectations are around so I put it in that prompt it was a really good book it was really cute um also I have been informed that it is Viscount not Viscount <laughs> I've been saying it wrong for like three weeks and I'm really glad someone corrected me before I sat down to film this um and yeah I thought it was really cute I'm very excited to read the rest of the Bridgerton series I think as soon as this challenge is done I'm gonna have a couple of like I'm gonna have books that don't really fit a prompt that I'm just ready to read boom 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 so I am excited to attack that so now I am going to roll in more prompts with my random number generator I'm just gonna roll like 10 numbers and I'm gonna go in order because I've read 27 books I'm almost two-thirds of the way through and we're two-thirds of the way through the year so I'm kind of on track and I am hoping um, that if I just pull it I'm gonna pull 10 numbers and I'll go in order and hopefully not all 10 will have already been filled okay so we have 37 to 44 19 13 so 37 I already have two is already rolled in that's a book with more than 500 pages which I did not address this past month but I already know what I'm gonna read and it'll definitely be done by the next update 44 is a memoir okay then we're gonna have 19 which is a Pulitzer Prize winning book, which I already read Beloved. 13 is a book of short stories, which I have not filled yet. 
and that's three, so I need one more that's not filled. 42 is a book based entirely on its cover. Oh, I've been excited about this one. Okay, that's four. Let's roll in another one. Why not? We've got, I have to read like five books a month, I think, to finish this, because I've got four months left of the year, five books. So let's roll in five. Um, and then next will be nine, which is a funny book, which I filled with people who meet on vacation. 51 is a book you started but never finished. Okay, perfect. I I have a title, I have a header, so everything shifted down, so I'm searching between two and 51 rather than one and 50. So the five prompts that we're going into September and October with are a book with more than 500 pages, a book of short stories, a book based entirely on its cover, a memoir and a book you started but never finished. So I already have ideas for what books I'm going to read for these, but I still am excited to get going on these. Yeah, I have some ideas, but I'm not completely sure about all of them. And I am excited to see where the next two months take me. If you liked today's video, please let me know down below. Um, I am really excited. I'm really enjoying doing this because it's really motivating me to read more and I really do love reading. Um, and you know, if, if we don't get all 50 by the end of the year, it's not going to be the end of the world, but I'm kind of excited that I'm somewhat on track. Um, so that is very exciting to me at least. Other than that, I hope you are having an incredible, awesome day wherever you are and that I get to see you in a future video. Thanks guys!